So a few weeks ago I made a video about a control panel and set of gauges that was brought in here from a gentleman that took it off of his excavator and he told me if I couldn't fix this thing it was going to end up costing him twelve hundred dollars. Well after looking it over I had determined that what was going on was the control buttons on the bottom had become eroded. In fact you can see the contact points in there that actually decayed over time. And under the circumstances, I, I knew it was going to be a little bit of a challenge to fix because of the fact that the actual control points were in such bad shape and it's not like the company was, was willing to sell us this part. And so I was looking over my options and I thought, you know, under the circumstances, probably the best thing I can do is build him a uh, small board with four switches on it. And that's what I ended up doing. But in the process of doing that, I started wondering more about the conductive glues and a lot of you recommended some different things I might try and I, I thought, you know, I owe it to my viewers to actually test some of these conductive glues to see which ones perform the best and to see about something one might use in the future. So what I did was I, I first picked up some of the Permatex conductive glue that's designed to fix the rear window heater grid on your car and this uh, you can pick up at any auto parts store and, and basically it was just a a little bottle of glue here. Actually it came in two parts but the only part I needed was the little bottle of glue. Conductive glue I should say. And they recommend that you put three applications of it across your heater grid where it's broken and that supposedly will fix it. Well I thought you know if it'll handle that much current it might be a good thing to use so I went ahead and I painted some of it onto this plexiglass here. They recommend three, three brush strokes by the way and I only put one well, actually, I put three and one. I wanted to see what the resistance would be. The first one I did with just one brush stroke. From here to here, I measured 140 ohms. The second time, I put three applications on with my paintbrush here, and I got it down to 8 ohms. The other two things I tried were the uh, conductive paints, and I was real disappointed at, at what, how high the resistance was on these conductive paints and how easily they flaked off of the plexiglass here. Now the most impressive one was the silver impregnated paint that I picked up on eBay. Now I wish I had a brand name for you. It was just something I saw advertised on there. It didn't have a brand name, but uh, I think it came from Thailand and the price was pretty good. That was the name I found it under. And I'm very impressed at how well it performed. In fact, um, when I took my uh, paintbrush and just put one stroke across there, it was actually 20 ohms from there to there. And that was just with one stroke. I thought, you know, it's one thing to see how how low the resistance is on a piece of plexiglass, but I wondered how it would perform in the real world. So what I did was I rigged up a little demo thing here where I I hooked a little, uh, well, I, I hooked my amp meter and my variable voltmeter, I should say, to these broken traces here that I painted across. And I wanted to see what would happen if I applied current across these points here to see how well this conductive glue would hold up. And the Permatex seemed to get pretty hot when I applied about half an amp between this point and this point here. But when I tried the same thing with the silver impregnated paint, much to my surprise, I was actually able to bring it up to three amps and it still continued to conduct. In fact, I'm gonna do that right here. And uh, now it, it does get hot. Now that keep in mind, that's just one brush stroke. And one thing I noticed, by the way, before you try any test with this stuff, whether it be a current test or a, a resistance test, make sure this stuff was fully cured because I noticed when it was still wet, I tried taking a resistance check and it looked like it wasn't going to work at all. So make sure it's fully cured. Also, I don't recommend this sort of thing in place of solder, but you know, if you're ever in a pinch and you maybe you don't have an option, you might consider something like this. I don't know how long it would hold up over time, but I, I'm very impressed at how well it's worked. You can see I, I didn't paint it on there too far on, on the ends here where I'm applying my current. And again, the Permatex, it, it worked well, although it, it did get very hot at about half an amp. And I guess it's designed to get hot because it's designed to heat up the windshield of your, or the rear windshield of your vehicle. Anyway, silver is known to be a good conductor. And I thought, you know, there might be an application where I could use it on a remote control pad as well. Um, you know, there are situations where sometimes these pads will go bad. Although a lot of times you can fix them just by pushing down on a piece of paper and dragging them across like this. You can see it leaves a little bit of a, 
a mark there on the paper when I do that. Uh, thanks to one of my viewers that pointed this out to me a long time ago. I still appreciate that. A lot of times you can restore these just by by doing this here. But uh, in a case where you might not be able to do that, this silver impregnated paint seems to go on here very thin, and, and I don't think it would be a far stretch to think you could just paint a little, little uh, silver dot on there if you had to. Anyway, I just thought this is something worth making a video on. Um, I, I had no idea that uh, something you could paint on could be that conductive and handle, handle that much current. Now also, uh, most of the time, these, these little controls here, they're not really passing a lot of current through them. And that's why in the case of the conductive paint, even something that, like that might work. Although, like I said, this stuff scratches off so easy and the resistance was so high. I'm not real thrilled about that. But anyway, I hope you uh, enjoy the information. I appreciate all, all the help I've gotten from my viewers on this one. And again, there was the name that I found the, the uh, silver conductive paint under. Um, I, I'd hope to try one of these silver conductive pens as well, but uh, they come from China and right now that a lot of things are delayed because of what's going on over there. Anyway, as always, I hope you like the video, and if you do, please subscribe and please give it a thumbs up. So I wonder if I turn this up here. If I left it on three amps. I wonder how long it would take before it starts smoking or something. That's amazing. Yeah, it's definitely getting hot. Now if I switch over to this other wire here, I wouldn't even want to try that at 3 amps. It had a much higher resistance too, it had a couple ohms resistance. Here I can turn this only up to about half an amp and it gets hot. And that's that's the Permatex on this side. Takes a moment to, to warm up. Yeah, they probably want this stuff to be a little bit resistive so it'll generate heat. Now you can definitely feel it warming up there. I know if I turn it up too high it's gonna start smoking at some point. Anyway. I guess that's good.